In today's episode of This Week in Formula 1, we're going to look at Jacques Villeneuve's criticism of Ferrari and also a bit of Charles Leclerc. Also, we're going to look at the Dutch Grand Prix possibly replacing the Spanish Grand Prix for 2020 and the possibility of a Q4 for qualifying also in 2020. And what I'll do is I'll analyse and give my true thoughts on these certain topics. So to hear what I have to say, make sure to check out this video. But let's first start off with the possibility, a strong possibility, of the Dutch Grand Prix replacing the Spanish Grand Prix for 2020. Now, when it comes to a Dutch Grand Prix, this has been a big possibility for quite a long time now. Basically, since Max Verstappen came into Formula 1 because... Max is basically a young superstar, his country loves him, he has so many Dutch fans that go to different races such as Spa and Austria and races like that and for the last three or four years a race in Holland has been pretty much guaranteed and it looks like the race in Barcelona at the Spanish Grand Prix is going to lose out to a Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. And this is the history of Zandvoort. So their first Grand Prix was 1952, where Alberto Ascari won that day. And their last Grand Prix at Zandvoort was in 1985, where Nicky Lauda won in a McLaren 1-2. And they held 30 races at Zandvoort from 52 to 85. Not in every single year, but in most years. So... It is a pretty historic track on the calendar and has plenty of history behind it. But when it comes to the Dutch Grand Prix, I'm going to be honest. Now, I think having this race on the calendar will be great from an atmosphere and money point of view because it's going to be sold out. There's going to be so many Max Verstappen fans. It will be a great atmosphere at a great time of year for those fans. But when it comes to the track... And the quality of the track in terms of overtaking and excitement, it's not that good of a track. It's too, too tight, not wide enough, and it's a pretty poor replacement for the Circuit de Catalonia. Now, the Circuit de Catalonia, it's not a bad track, but it's not that good. But if you're going to replace that track, at least replace it with something that is a lot better. Don't replace it with a track that could see less passing than that track because that's honestly what I think will happen. It's going to be one of those races, Zandvoort, where it'll have a great atmosphere, but we won't get any real good racing. It'll just be like Monaco, except it's in Holland and on a proper racetrack. And I think in the long term, a Dutch Grand Prix is not going to work if it doesn't have good racing at all, but only has a good atmosphere. Now, you can say Monaco has that, but we have had so many races at Monaco, and we've also had plenty of great races at Monaco. Can anyone out there name a famous Dutch Grand Prix from Zandvoort? I can't, and I think you'd struggle to find anyone who can. And I think Formula 1 runs the risk of letting the Dutch Grand Prix turn into a fan event more so than an actual Grand Prix. Because, again, if the racing is poor, that is basically what it's going to be, a fan event. And also, let's be honest, the only reason the Dutch Grand Prix is going to happen is because they're going to make a ton of money from the amount of people that are going to be there. They're not going to Zandvoort for great racing. They're going there for money. And I totally get that, and from a commercial point of view, it makes sense. But in the long term, again, how long can they get away with that? I don't think they can for a long amount of time. If they were to replace, say, the Russian Grand Prix with the Dutch Grand Prix, I would be for that because I absolutely despise that track in Russia. It is the worst track I have ever seen. But if you compare it to the track in Catalonia, they're basically the same in terms of passing opportunity. The only thing you're getting in the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort is a better atmosphere. And to be honest, I would rather them just put the Dutch Grand Prix on the calendar alongside the Spanish Grand Prix instead of replacing it because I just think it would fit better. But one thing I think we can say is that the Dutch Grand Prix is absolutely going to happen for 2020. We don't know the exact date it's going to happen next year, but I can basically guarantee we will have a race in Holland for 2020. 
But of course, I can be proven wrong and let's hope I am. But now let's go on to our next story, which is to do with possible changes to qualifying for 2020. And good news, the possible or proposed changes to qualifying, which was introducing Q4, those proposals have been scrapped. Which is a good thing because qualifying is not broken. You don't need to fix it. It's absolutely fine. It's the best qualifying system which is good news because qualifying and that system they use is not broken and it doesn't need to be fixed. So don't understand why the FIA and also FOM try to change qualifying so many times when, again, it works so well. They tried to do it in 2016. That failed miserably. And they tried to do it again when it doesn't need to be. Why do you need to change something that is so good anyway? I just don't get the logic behind it. And from what I can see anyway, the only reason they wanted Q4 was for more TV time, which is not that great of a reason to be making more alterations to the way qualifying works. So thankfully that will not be happening for 2020 and hopefully they just leave qualifying as it is but one thing that has happened is that the rules for 2020 have finally been finalized. Now, I don't want to get into what those rules are right now because I am going to be making a separate video when it comes to that later on in 2019 or even at the start of 2020. So I will get into that eventually, but just not right now. And also, I want to make sure I understand the rules and make the best video I can to explain what the rules for 2020 exactly are. So there you go on that story. And the final story is Jacques Villeneuve taking issue with Ferrari employing Charles Leclerc as their driver for 2019 because he feels that Leclerc and Ferrari as a partnership just isn't ready yet. And when you actually look at what Jacques Villeneuve has to say, it's not that controversial. And I think he does have a point. This is what Jacques has to say. He said, Leclerc is quick. He personally is ready. It's Ferrari that's not ready for this kind of situation. They already had Leclerc, so they could have given him a contract for 2020 or 2021 and kept Kimi for just one more year. But with the way Ferrari operates, the way Seb is, he needs that Sebastian Vettel, by the way, this kind of love around him, and it was just not the right move. Now, I don't fully agree with what's being said here, but I think he may have a point, and I think that point might become clear as 2019 goes on. I understand the point of view of Charles Leclerc did not have to be rushed into this seat, and they could have waited and kept Kimi Räikkönen in that seat, but... Charles Leclerc, I think, did well enough to get into the Ferrari immediately for 2019. And I don't think, if I was the team principal Ferrari, I don't think I would have waited. But as Jacques points out, Ferrari are not exactly ready for an equal driver status team with Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc. And I think so far you can kind of see that because Ferrari haven't made that many good decisions when it comes to team orders and favoring a certain driver over another in certain situations so i think he does have a point but again as the season goes on i think this point will be more so clarified because we'll see even more incidents between leclerc and vettel and i'm sure we will have plenty more team orders when it comes to those two drivers but I will say he is 100% right when it comes to Sebastian Vettel when he says that Vettel needs this kind of love around him in the team. He does. He absolutely does. He needs to feel in a team, does Vettel, that he is the absolute number one, 100% absolute number one. No one can possibly come close to him. That's how he has to be made to feel inside Ferrari. And when he's not feeling that way or being beaten by his teammate, that's when he starts to get down. And that's when he starts to make mistakes and get very frustrated and really show his, at times, anger management issues. Now, I don't personally like that about Sebastian Vettel because I personally feel as though if you're such a great driver, 
Why can't you beat another great driver in the same team? He's a full-time world champion. Why can't he do so? I mean, yeah, Mark Webber was equal with Vettel in 2009 and 2010. But the team, I think, valued Vettel more during those two years than they did with Mark Webber. So it was still kind of Vettel's team. It was kind of being built around him even before Sebastian won his first world championship. And the only years he hasn't been the number one in the team is, of course, 2014 and really this season. But in a similar way to Michael Schumacher, I think there are some drivers out there that just need that feeling around the team for them. Some drivers need to be loved. Some drivers are fine with an equal teammate of equal standing. And it really falls on the personality of the driver. And again, I have to agree with Villeneuve. I think Vettel does have to feel loved by his own team. And I think we can see also that Ferrari are losing their love of Sebastian Vettel because his mistakes in 2018 did cost the team a lot of points. Ferrari's mistakes also threw away a lot of points, but Vettel did as well. And I think there is a growing frustration at that team between Ferrari and Vettel. And I think eventually that is going to come to a head. But I just want to get into one last thing when it comes to this story. Now, Jacques Villeneuve has a reputation of being a bit wacky when it comes to his opinions. Now, when this story broke about him questioning Ferrari employing Leclerc for 2019, and some of the headlines were Villeneuve disagrees with Leclerc being at Ferrari, he doesn't think Leclerc should be at Ferrari. The reaction to that, I have to say, was so, so, so stupid. So stupid. Because if any of you out there that were also reacting in such a stupid way, saying, oh, Villeneuve's just an old man, he doesn't know what he's thinking. If you actually took the time to click on the article, read what he had to say, you would have realised he didn't say anything that controversial and actually made quite a good point. So next time when Jacques Villeneuve says anything, actually no, when anyone says anything, don't just read the headline. Look at what the actual article is saying. Look at what they're saying. Don't just read the headline because the headline is not the story. The story is in the article. So if you are one of them that were acting like this, I'm sorry to say, but you were stupid because all you had to do was read the article and you would have seen that he made a good point. But as usual, whenever Jacques Villeneuve says anything, and this is also for, uh, goes for Eddie Irvine. Whenever they say anything, their opinions are just thrown away as, oh, they're just two old men, you know, sharing their archaic opinions. When actually, some of the time, they make good points. So, yeah, I, I just don't understand where this comes from. And I think people need to honestly smarten up and actually read what these people have to say instead of just assuming what they have to say. Sorry about the rant, but it has to be said because I saw some people out there that honestly were so, so dumb with their criticism when you knew that they didn't actually read what he had to say. But guys, that's the latest news in the world of Formula 1. Let me know in the comments section what you think of my opinion of these certain stories and let me know your opinion on these stories by commenting down below. And also, of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button for more content like this. And until next time, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.